If you feel like you're drowning in work and you can't grow your business without burning out, this is your video. I'm gonna show you how and why and who should be your first hire. My name is Vanessa. Joy and I have spent the last two decades building a thriving photography business and not just a photography one, but also an online educational one. And I've used the same methods for both of them in order to scale my business and bring personnel on. So I'm not the one doing all of the work. It was scary. It was overwhelming at times. And I remember feeling, am I ready for this? Am I financially ready for this? Am I emotionally ready? But trust me, once I got past that and I finally made the leap in my business went from just surviving to seriously scaling. And I want to show you in this video exactly how I got there, what I did and how it transformed my business. So let's get going. Let me show you how to do it the right way. First of all, congratulations if you are at the point where you're hitting that milestone that you realize, you know what, I can't do this all on my own and I need help, fantastic. This is something to absolutely celebrate. So pop that champagne, celebrate it, and of course, let's get back to work. I have not built a business of my own that is now 16 years old. I mean, I've been doing this for over 20 years, but my own business is 16 years old and I did not build that all on the sweat of my brow and all the weight on my own back, not in a million years. I absolutely had help. You're going to need help if you want to scale your business in a successful way that's going to give your clients the best experience, the best quality possible. Now you might be thinking things like, what if I'm not ready? What if I hire the wrong person? What if I can't afford it? What if I'm just not ready? I hear you. I've been there. Every entrepreneur before you has been there, but here's what I want you to think about. Offloading your tasks is not really the entire primary goal. Yes, there are a bunch of things on your plate and you're realizing that, hey, I want to stop doing some of these things, but there's really five things you want to think about, five basically clues or things that you should be outsourcing and it's not all about the tasks. All the Black Friday Cyber Monday deals are here and Lexar has one for you for this exact drive. In fact, if you're not familiar with Lexar, they make cards, card readers, SSD drives, all things that you can rely on and that I personally rely on as a professional photographer. Lexar's Black Friday deal only runs from November 21st to December 2nd, so make sure you snag this right away. They have 35% off the SL500 two terabyte drive that I've got right here. It's super lightweight, compact. I use these things all the time. Throw them right in my bag. I travel a lot as a photographer. So the fact that they're very durable is really, really nice. If you want something even more durable, the Lexar Armor 700, their four terabyte version is also up to 35% off. That one can take a beating. I'm grabbing some drives. Make sure you grab these deals in the link below. I have an exclusive link for you to get up to 35% off these SSD drives. If you're a photographer, Lord knows we can't ever have enough space. So I'm sure you'll snag these. Go ahead and grab these up to December 2nd. December 2nd, back to the video. So first of all, you have to be ready in two different ways before I get to the five things that you should have someone else do for you and your business. Let's just talk about the two ways that you need to be ready. First, you need to be financially ready. Whichever one of these five things I'm going to give you that you decide is you know where you want to outsource and where you want to hire, you have to be financially ready. So look at the costs, look at how much money you're making and see how much that you can put aside, maybe start putting it aside now about three months worth of that salary or that cost so that you're financially ready. But secondly, you need to be emotionally ready. A lot of times entrepreneurs are in a creative field. So if you're in a creative field, we tend to personally connect with our work. We're in our feelings and we just hold on to a lot of control because of that and because of the creative nature of what we do. So you need to be emotionally ready to let that go. And one way to wrap your brain around it, the difference between that 80% of the way satisfactory in your head versus 100% satisfactory in your head. Because the truth of the matter is, your clients don't notice that last 20% of a difference. But what they will notice is you not delivering something on time, or you not fulfilling a promise that you made, or you not being reachable or attainable or whatever fill in the blank you want to do there. That last 20%, and don't get me wrong, I am not telling you to half-ass what you're doing, absolutely not. 
I just want you to take a look at that last 20%, maybe 10% of a difference between done good, blowing my clients' minds and that last little bit that's maybe blowing your mind. Think about it, just think about it. It's gonna help you be emotionally ready and realize that done is better than perfect because your clients aren't gonna notice the difference between good and perfect anyway. And as long as you are exceeding their expectations that you have set for them, you are succeeding. Let's now dive into the five things that you should look to outsource. So whether you're outsourcing it through automation or AI. You could be outsourcing it through a company. I use companies for a variety of things, or you could be outsourcing it through an individual, whether they're hired on as a freelance contractor or they're hired on as an employee. I am going to give you also at the end of this video, a little freebie. It's one I don't talk about a lot, but I have compiled a list of the majority of companies and people that I outsource to personally. I'm going to give that to you at the end of this video, a complete complete list of every single company that I use for the most part. And I do keep it updated. So it's not going to be, you're looking at this two years later and oh, Vanessa's list isn't updated. I'm not going to bother downloading it. No, I'm going to keep it updated for you, but I'll give that to you at the end of this video. Number one, you want to outsource anything that you hate doing. You did not become an entrepreneur to do all the things that you absolutely hate to do. Maybe you became a photographer because you wanted to hold a camera. So why are you spending a ton of your time doing the bookkeeping on your business? That's something that you absolutely can hire out for. Second, you want to outsource anything that you're not good at. Now, this may hurt a little bit, but for example, in my business, one of the first things that I outsourced was editing my photos. And I know that you're thinking, well, you're a photographer, you should be editing your photos. No, quite frankly, I'm not that good at it. And I'm even worse at it when it comes to bulk editing, like editing a wedding and a thousand drunk people dancing. Not only do I hate doing that, but I'm not good at it either. So I've outsourced to places like Editing House, Shoot.Edit, Freedom Edits, and I also use an individual, her name is Kayla, she's amazing, for all of my high-end weddings. You could also use something like Imagine AI and use AI in that circumstance. So you really have a lot of options, whether you're trying to automate, hire out to a company, or hire out to an individual. And of course, if you have enough work, you could bring on that individual full time. So outsource what you hate, what you're not good at. And the third thing you want to outsource is something that takes up too much of your time. Now I have a fantastic example of this and it doesn't even have to do with my business. Really, it has to do with my home life. Right now there are cleaners in my house and I know that just sounds wildly pretentious, but back when I was only making about $40,000 a year, that was one of the first things that I outsourced because I realized it took me too much time. If it takes me eight hours to clean my entire house, what else could I be doing in those eight hours? I could be going out and expanding my network. I could be doing some organic marketing, some social media. There are so many other things that are better use of my time that's going to make me more money than me cleaning my house. So I outsourced that because it took too much time. The third thing you want to consider outsourcing is anything where your face is not. For example, with my online education, I could not outsource recording a video like this because my face has to be here. But can I outsource the editing for it? Yes. Absolutely, I could outsource the editing for it because that's not where my face is presented to my clients, presented to my public. So think about the things where you do not have to be face forward and consider outsourcing those. Now, I love using replayed.co and upper hand creative management for all of my editing videos. Just two companies that I use, but then I also have somebody that is pretty much full-time. She is a freelance contractor because she does it for a lot of other people, but she works and edits the majority of my YouTube videos as well as my husband's wedding films. She is amazing and absolutely necessary in our business. Let's just stop there in the middle of those five things and talk about the secrets to hiring someone. How do you do that successfully? Well, one of the things you want to consider is you have to figure out your personality and the type of personality you want to hire if you're going to be working with someone. This wasn't just about finding extra hands. It was someone that's going to be an extension of my business and potentially representing me. So those are the things that you want to consider in addition to, of course, being able to hire them. For me, one of the things that I did is I created a list of all of the things that I wanted to offload and realized that they might not all be the same person. I needed somebody to do a lot of the shipping. I ship a lot of client gifts. So I needed someone to do that here in my studio, but I also needed someone to do accounting and 
bookkeeping. And those two people are not the same. I have somebody separate for the accounting and bookkeeping and someone separate that would come and help me in the studio. It's not just about finding someone to help you in your business and get the tasks done. It's finding someone that's going to help you thrive and build the business right alongside with you and maybe even motivate you along the way. The other thing you want to consider when hiring either a person, not as much a company, but an individual person is turnover. Learn to anticipate turnover of that person. Maybe they're just entering their next life stage and they're going to need to find employment that's a little bit more stable or pays a little bit more. And sometimes it's outside of of whatever job you have for them, it's outside the typical pay scale for that. That's okay. Maybe they've been with you a little while and you know what, it's not a good fit or they're just bored and want something new. Whatever it is, try to anticipate that turnover and then have that current employee train the new employee so it's not taking a ton of your time. Now, another thing that you can do, whether it's your first employee, virtual assistant, or you have that turnover, is to create a Loom video library. Now the Loom video library is huge because any digital task that you do, you can simply record and then you'll end up having this massive library that any of your employees can look back on to see how to do things. These are called SOPs or something, something processes, operating processes, but Loom is my favorite way to do that. And now back into the rest of the five things that you really should outsource. Now the fifth thing you want to consider outsourcing is anything that you can pay less than your own hourly wage. So think about it this way. If you did all of your math and you added everything up and you end up making, let's just say $50 an hour. If you can hire someone to do some of the tasks that you do for less than that $50 an hour, that might be something you want to consider outsourcing. Because if you can go out and make $50 an hour while basically double tasking the things that you need to get done and paying, I don't know, 15, $20, $25 an hour to someone else to get things done at the same time, then you're winning. So those are the five things you want to consider outsourcing when you are financially and emotionally ready. Now, I know I promised you, you are going to get that list of all of the people that I mentioned, systems, processes, online management systems that I personally outsource to. You can grab that in the link to the description below, or if you are watching on TikTok or Instagram, just comment joy tools and you'll get a DM with the link to download all of those tech tools. I know you're going to love them. They're going to be really useful in your business. So there you have it. Your first hire does not have to be so overwhelming. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a company, maybe it's AI or automation, but I hope I've given you just a little bit of clarity, a little bit of confidence during this amazing time and transition in your business. You might not even be full time at your passion or your entrepreneurial job right now, you could be hiring someone because you still have a day job and you're not ready to make that transition. But if you watch this next video about how to make that transition, it's called don't quit your day job yet. I have a lot of information that's going to help you out in deciding if you are ready to go full time in the business you've created. My name is Vanessa Joy. If you like what you see, make sure you hit subscribe and stick around. Bye. Oh, this is Zoe, by the way. Bye-bye. <laughs>